NVMe is here, NVMe is there, SSD is here. Are you sick of everybody talking about NVMe's all the time, including me? What, you want another one? Okay, that's enough. In this video, we're gonna be talking about these instead. So here's five reasons why you might wanna consider HDDs instead of or as well as NVMEs in 2024 and five. By the way, huge thanks for Newegg and Seagate for partnering up with this video. If you want to check out any of these uh, drives, then check them out. Links in the description below. And I'll give you some of the tips how to get the best bang for buck later on in this video with some of the hard drive buying decisions. Now, point number one, you might think that hard drives only are for <coughs> NAS enclosures. But the good thing actually is that the hard drives are compatible with a PC or a NAS. And even if you don't have a NAS just yet, I highly recommend getting a NAS rated hard drives for your PC because later on you can actually just insert them into your NAS and get more storage, redundancy, and just migrate all your data using Seagate drives in there as well. I've just realized I think all my NAS drives are Seagate drives one way or another. Number two, much higher durability. And you might be saying, what the heck are you talking about? I thought SSDs are more durable than hard drives because they have all these moving, you know, components inside that are very fragile. And you are actually right. I'm not saying you're wrong. By durability, I mean the data that can be written on the drive. Now you might know that the usual NVMEs on the market have a terabyte written spec. Well, hard drives don't actually have that because you can just write as much as you want. In five years, if you've got the usual drive, not these ones because these are NAS rated NVMe, so they have a little bit of a higher durability rating and a bit more expensive. But if you look at a usual NVMe on the market, it's usually 600 terabytes per one terabyte. And if you've got a four terabyte model, then it's 2,400 terabytes over the five year period or warranty period. Now, with these guys, the situation is a lot different. They don't have a terabyte written spec, yet they have a very high MTBF rating, which is 2.5 million hours between failures. In other words, what this means is if we take any one of these two drives, the speed is 285 megabytes per second read or write. You could write at that speed 24 hours a day, which is roughly about 24.6 terabytes a day, 365 days a year, which is roughly 8,987 terabytes a year, which is 8.9 petabytes a year. And over the five years, it's roughly about 44,938 terabytes or 44.9 petabytes in five years compared to something like a usual NVMe SSD, which is 2,400 terabytes, that is 18.7 times more you can write on these drives compared to an NVMe. So durability on the hard drives is a lot more. So as a creator, where that comes helpful is when you're running these in archival storage, let's say you're writing lots of files on there or you're running huge amounts of data as a creator writing all the time over onto it, then the SSDs might not be the best option if you're not constantly using the data. Let's say you just do lots of big shoots and then you just put all the data in there. And then when you start editing on it, you move certain bits of data into a hotter drive or something like that, or a hotter, faster drive like the NVMe. And archival storage, these guys are insane. Or in a scenario where your workflow requires very high intensity data written on the drives, then hard drives, or these two, are much, much better than an NVMe. Point number three, it actually takes less space and faff. Now you might be saying, dude, this guy is a lot smaller than one of these big bad boys. And you're not wrong. 
But in order to get 24 terabytes, you're gonna have to get at least six of these guys. Let's pretend that these bendy ones are working as well. And then with these six, you're gonna have to have the motherboard slots. If you don't have a motherboard slot, you're gonna have to get something like this, an NVMe extension onto your PC. Now, can you see how this, this only takes four, by the way. Look at the size difference now. We have to have two more and suddenly it's much better to get one of these for space convenience. Number four, price point. The price point for these is much, much cheaper than an NVMe. For 24 terabyte, this one here, I can see a new egg goes roughly around $460. You might be finding a deal when you're watching this, maybe even better deal for 24 terabytes. Now, a four terabyte drive from Samsung 990 Pro, for example, goes roughly around $320 per terabyte. That is four times more expensive compared to the Seagate drive. You might be thinking, yeah, this is $450 but you get a lot of terabytes with it. So if you think about archiving or you have lots of data, don't buy an NVMe SSD because that might not be the best option for you. You might think, yeah, I want fast storage and I'm gonna get eight terabyte drives, NVMe's. Actually, you don't need it. It's probably a waste of time for you, especially if you're archiving lots of B-roll footage or lots of some kind of footage. It's best to get a hard drive. And number five, lastly, the capacity. You can get 24 terabytes per drive, which means that in a four NAS configuration, for example, here, you can get 96 terabytes of storage, which is insane. For NVMe, you only get eight terabytes per this little drive. And often the NVMe slots on your PC, on your NAS are limited, unless you have like the ASUS Tor Flash Tor 12 Pro, which has 12 NVMe slots. But even there, the price point is absolutely insane. It's much better if you need a lot of capacity, there is nothing that beats a hard drive. Before I'm gonna share some of the tips of buying these hard drives with you, I also wanna talk about the speed. Now these hard drives are some of the best hard drive speeds that you can actually get. Now. I've got some hard drives that I'm used to getting just 100 megabytes per second speeds, which are just pretty, pretty slow. But these hard drives have one of the latest and newer technologies. So they go up to 285, sometimes up to 300 megabytes, somewhere around 300 megabytes speeds, which is not even actually capping the SATA connection that we have here. You might be saying, dude, that is really slow. Well, for that, capacity drive actually it's not bad and it's one of the best that you can get in a hard drive most likely you are not going to be running these hard drives in a single hard drive you know configuration and if you are it's still fine to get one of these pop it into your pc and then later on get another one and then pop it in there you can actually get much better speeds when you get two drives and run them in raid one and i highly recommend so this is tip one now to get two of these hard drives when you get them for your PC, because that actually gives you redundancy of a drive. So RAID 1 means that you're gonna have the data split between two of these drives. And if one of them fails, then you still have all of your data. But the benefit of this is that when you're reading the data, because the data is stored on both of the devices, you can actually get twice the read performance from the hard drives when you have two of them. So you're not just gonna get redundancy, you also get twice the speed. That is only read speed. The write speed can be slower because now you're gonna have to write the data onto both of the drives, if that makes sense. So when considering buying the hard drives and capacity, consider getting two just because it's also a little bit more, you know, data proof, where you've got redundancy if something happens with the drive you know it's still all there or your archival data that you worked hard on collecting and later on when you populate it into your NAS you already have a RAID setup and in theory you can just add two more drives and then just migrate from RAID 1 to RAID 5 or 6 for example. Now when you're looking at the capacities I highly recommend doing spending five minutes on it and checking out the pricing on different drives. Now, just before this video, I went and started checking the pricing. And interestingly enough, the highest model, 24 terabyte model, 
is cheaper than the 22 terabyte model. And I'm thinking, so who would actually buy the 22 terabyte model? And the same with some of the lower end hard drives. Don't buy the very, very low end drives like a four terabyte one or six terabyte one because you're probably gonna get better bank for buck or even better price overall for an eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 terabyte one. So have a look a little bit which of the drives are on a sale. And if you're not limited to actual slots or you don't want the highest capacity in certain amount of bays, then just play around a little bit. Maybe instead of getting 24 terabytes, it's actually cheaper to get two 16 terabyte drives because overall it's cheaper or something like that. In my experience, the lower capacity drives, you're gonna get less of a deal than some of the mid or high range ones. Sometimes the high range ones also have a very good deal and they look a little bit cheaper. And also another thing I can see right now is that the Exos and Iron Wolf Pro from Seagate are the same price at the time of me making the video. Now you check that out as well if that's the same case for you, but if these are the same price, I would go with the Exos X24 one because it's more enterprise rated and it's a little bit more robust. Now. On paper, both of them have insane durability and insane specs and are some of the market leading hard drives. But the Exos has a few things that are a little bit better than the Iron Wolf Pro that you're not going to really see in terms of performance, you know, speed, but you're going to see more like durability and working together. So it's a little bit more clever if you have multi multi like drive setup, like in a massive base, for example. Then the Exos is a little bit better working out the vibration of all of the drives in the enclosure and can be a little bit better at spinning different speeds so it's not actually damaging the drive by being in an enclosure. But the Iron Wolf Pro is also clever. So if you've got it in a NAS enclosure, it does use different speeds to reduce vibration and actually save the drive. So it's very, very clever as well. A few more things that make Seagate hard drives a little bit different than the competition. Seagate's Health Management Program 3.0, which is specifically known as Einwolf Health Management IHM 3.0. It's designed to keep your NAS running at peak performance. Number one, prevention. IHM 3.0 proactively monitors your Einwolf and Einwolf Pro drives to prevent potential issues by analyzing various parameters and environmental factors. Number two, intervention. It provides real-time alerts and recommendations to address any detected issues before they become critical. And number three, recovery. In case of a catastrophic event, IHM 3.0 offers recovery analysis and can advise on backing up your data to prevent data loss. Finally, Seagate's got their data rescue recovery service, which helps you recover your data when something bad happens. You've got access to world-class data recovery experts, one in a lab data recovery adept, and an encrypted storage storage device with your data if the recovery is successful. Or this is how Seagate likes to differentiate these two hard drive series. NAS and Enterprise hard drives differ primarily in their intended use and design features. NAS drives like Seagate Ironwolf series are optimized for lower power consumption, quieter operation, and are ideal for small to medium businesses or home environments. Enterprise drives such as Seagate Exo series are built for higher performance reliability and endurance designed to handle 24-7 operation in demanding data center and enterprise settings. Hope that makes it a little bit more clearer as well as the price point. Now don't be confused with the Iron Wolf and Iron Wolf Pro. The Iron Wolf drives, I've got the Iron Wolf drives in here, they are actually a little bit lower end ones than the Pro ones. The Pro ones are faster, so bear that in mind. Exos, Iron Wolf Pro and Iron Wolf. Now, I know that there's a few reasons why you shouldn't buy a hard drive and I would love to know from you in the comment section below why people shouldn't buy a hard drive. But I asked uh, Robbie from NAS Compares if he had a thousand dollars, would he buy SSDs or HDDs and uh, why? And here's his answer. Too tough to answer, very use case specific. Like saying, if I gave you two thousand dollars, would you buy a car or a motorbike? Both have their ADV DIS to different users. The real answer for HDD or SSD is both, tiered hybrid. So $1,000, $750 on HDDs, approx $30 per TB, and the other $250 on SSDs, $70 per TB, depending on SATE NVMe. Pulls them into respective storage pools, leverage their usage for tasks. But the question is, what would yours be if you had $1,000 to spend would you get hard drives? 
or would you get SSDs? As always, if you want to build yourself the best bank for buck, create a PC, the new series is already linked in the description below. It leads to the latest video. So build yourself a PC with the best bank for buck performance. You're going to get insane PCs. This four part series, whatever your budget is, there's a video down there. And if you want to pick up any of these that I'm talking about, I'm going to leave the links in the description below. Thanks Seagate and Newark for making this video possible. See you soon. Bye bye.